Bonjour, I'm Tim. And I'm Karen. And welcome to another episode of Living a French Life. We have pared back this house to its bare essentials. Bare walls, bare floors. We really have a grasp now of what we're looking at. It's true. It is a brutal revelation of just how small the space is and how clever we're going to have to be with both storage and budget. In past episodes, we've talked about our wants and our needs, but now it's going to be time to start talking about what we can do without. Yeah, that, that's when you have to set up your priorities about those things that are essential for your day-to-day -day living and those things that, you know, do you really need a microwave? If you don't use a microwave, do you need to give up precious space in a very tiny kitchen for one? So you need to ask yourself those tough questions. What can I do without? I can do without the $5,000 faucet. Yes, we will be doing without <laughs> I did find a lovely faucet. We have that enormous stone sink and we have to have the water actually go somewhere towards the center and we can't come out from the back wall. So anyway, the faucet's becoming kind of a thing. And yeah, some of the engineering requirements of right. using an, the, the bones of the old house are, are gonna come into play over right. the next several episodes. Yeah. And we can see those bones now that we have everything removed. <laughs> and we're starting to think about, okay, what can we do without? I think we can do without a dishwasher. Now that might not be the case for many folks out there, but for us, we tend to wash our dishes anyways. It's just the two of us. And uh, so it's not really a big deal. Yeah, and uh, we'll be doing without a clothes dryer because we don't have the space for it. For one thing. Yeah, we still have to figure out where the washing machine is going to go. And that- We are not going to do without. No, so. that is a priority. <laughs> so we have to think about that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll uh, address some of those things. Uh, today, uh, Karen is going to talk about some of her design mojo. Yeah, we're going to talk about suitability. You know, I think that's really important when you sit down and begin to think about this multitude of decisions you need to make about design. You need to ask yourself, is this suitable? Does it fit with the architecture and does it fit with the way that we live? And also we're going to, as you can see behind us, we have a new bare wall. Voila. So we're going to show that project. And uh, as I mentioned last week, I was going to be working on the contour. I've got a fun video to show you there. Oh my. <laughs> Uh, have not started constructing a bunch of the contour, but I did replace some of the stones, so that's yes, good. Yes, right. We're getting there. And we've got our mix decided for the pointing, wanting to go with a, a chalk and a fine sand. So we've got those materials gathered. Now we just have to uh, give our try at, uh, at pointing. So, like and subscribe, and let's go show you how we got the render off of this wall. How's it going? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I started out cold. I'm not cold anymore. <laughs> and I have a sense that uh, Michelangelo had a start somewhere, right? <laughs> and so here I am just removing the parts that don't belong. I think it's going to be a beautiful wall. Hey, what's that hat you're wearing? Hey, come on, Essie. I really'd like to be a distributor for you here in Southwest France. <laughs> <sighs> Hey, Maurice. Yes. Wave. Yes. <laughs> Here we are. Maurice has been uh, working Woo! really hard today. Oh. Yeah. Wait, you guys see the reveal on this yes. thing.
So you kind of get an idea of what we're going to end up with. Yeah, what do you think, Karen? It looks good, honey. Surprisingly, there's more big rocks than I thought, you know? Yeah. It'll be a nice, it'll be a nice wall. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a midway reveal. Today's project is to repair the wall in the contour, up near the top where uh, some of the stone has fallen out. It was loose, not mortared in particularly well. There's some fire brick and things like that. And uh, we want to repair that so that we don't get a bunch of debris down in the contour on a regular basis. Uh, we're going to be drying our clothes in here with the, uh, with the laundry maid. And uh, we don't want to get uh, uh, mortar and dust and dirt on our freshly clean clothes and we don't want it on our stove on the things that we're cooking. So uh, my job is going to be to kind of seal up this top part up here to keep that from uh, that debris from falling down. Now this wall goes on up through to the etage and I thought that it might be a good idea to give a little extra support to the floor in this area uh, as I'm building the wall. Uh, this particular part of the floor is going to be in a storage cabinet, so uh, it does not have to be good floor, um, and which is a good thing because we are going to be short of good floorboards. And so I'm going to be using a nice sheet of OSB, but I have to cut it uh, in such a way that it fits in against the wall. It's a, the term for this is called scribing. And, uh, in days gone by, you would use a compass, uh, you know, that thing you might remember from uh, geometry uh, when you were back in high school, uh, in order to follow the line of the wall and trace the shape of the wall onto your board and cut along that line. Well, Karen got me a nifty little gift for Christmas and we're gonna try that out. You may have seen these uh, advertised on Facebook uh, they're kind of cool. Um, you've got a nice little rolling bearing here so that you can go along, uh, along the edge of the wall. And you've got this slot here for your pencil. And this is adjustable. It, it's a pretty terrific little thing and it's good and, good and strong, good and sturdy. So we'll see how it works out. I've set the board so that it is the uh, proper distance so that it will go on the uh, rafters going across the floor joists and I've lined it up so that it is uh, pretty straight with the wall uh, and pretty straight with the uh, the horizontal members here and what I'm going to do is I'm now going to use this to trace the line of this wall so that when I cut it out it will snug right in. Are you getting in there, Rob? I am. so excited to be thinking about design right now. While we aren't going to be painting anything anytime soon or moving in any furniture, I think it's important to have a sense of what your color palette's going to be because that'll help you to make decisions as you get to places such as, are we going to paint the beams? Or are we going to keep them their natural color? We're going to keep them their natural color. So that means I need to consider that in my color palette what about that huge beam uh, in the contour? 
Are we gonna keep that? Yeah. So then I need to think about, okay, how am I gonna incorporate that dark, rich uh, fumé of the beam into the color scheme? Another thing we need to consider are our stone walls. That back stone wall is gonna be the focal point, and so we need to consider the colors that are in that stone as we pick our color palette. So those are some things that you can use as a jumping off point. You can also use uh, inspiration from like a favorite postcard. I love these colors. And so I naturally gravitate towards them, and I'll use them in the color palette for Glendine. But I don't want to go too dark. I want to stay sort of in a mid-range, but not forgetting about putting in that almost black somewhere in each room. I love this color. You can think about things that were in the house. For instance, we had a wall that we removed that was this color. And I actually love this mustardy color, so I'll somehow incorporate that in, I think maybe in the downstairs powder room. Think about things you already have that you want to utilize. I have a bolt of this Belgium linen that I have been saving for, oh my gosh, it, probably 10 or 12 years for just the right place. And I think I found the right place. It's going to go on to some chairs that I currently have that I want to reupholster. And it has that wonderful little color thread subtle that runs through, which is my favorite color, a French blue. I call it French blue. Can you see? It, it's not too gray. Um, it definitely reads as blue, and I love that it's a mid-range color. But I also love a lighter shade. I call this Vaughn Gray, um, named after a dear friend of mine. And so I need to put this Vaughn Gray or the Vaughn Blue somewhere in my house so that there's a little bit of my... Um, fellow Francophile friend there. Everything has meaning and everything is done very purposefully. Think about the colors that you like to use. I love these gold and greens. They remind me of the outside. And so when you look through our home, since it's a small home, you're gonna be looking to the outside landscape. And so I need to think about that in my color palette. So the browns, the greens, and then this is as close to that Burton White that I found, uh, we talked about last week on a Benjamin Moore paint that I found in a fabric and that I will eventually translate to a French um, lime wash for the walls. Also, think about metals. Pick up things that are in your home. Isn't that sweet? It is a little oil can for one of my many sewing machines. And I love the patina on it. And so that's something I'm gonna be looking for when I'm thinking about taps or hardware for, for armoires. And these two little thimbles I picked up this morning. Can you see them? And they're wonderful because they remind me that I adore unlacquered brass, but that I can mix metals as well. You know. Do it with some kind of restraint. I wouldn't put a really sharp chrome in there with an aged bronze, but you can mix colors from your metals, so think about that. And a little bit of paint, too. I mean, this could go on a little tiny metal side table, and that'll help add a little bit of sparkle in a space that we might not otherwise think to put. So as you work through your home design, think about your color palette. Look to perhaps a beautiful rug for inspiration, a painting that's a favorite. I've got a couple that I'm using for Glandine. Or uh, an old needlepoint. And use that as a springboard, and you'll be surprised at just how many colors come to mind. With all this conversation about design, I have a sense that we might have reached a turning point. Yeah, it really feels like we are at the end of the beginning. Uh, this afternoon, uh, I'll be installing the I-beams down in the cav with the help of Francis. Yes. And uh, we'll show you that next week in the episode. And then it's just a matter of straightening out the floor and we can re begin to rebuild the space. Because right now, it is just a big, empty space. It's true. Now, our home does not demand perfection. 
but we aren't going to compromise on craftsmanship or quality of materials as well. And in the end, a room is most successful if it works before you put anything in it. Well, there's nothing in it now, so no. <laughs> I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to really work out well for us. Yes. That means that on next week's episode, you get to see us install the I-beams, if all goes to plan. And I'm going to get up my nerve to actually begin pointing the stonework. Ooh. So, like and subscribe, ring the little bell icon. And go all the way to the end where you'll find the outtakes. And until next time. A tu teller. Okay. Let's see yours. Okay, good. Nose. Okay. <laughs> How's my hair? Not put that in. Hair's looking good, honey. Yeah, okay, fine. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. <laughs> uh, eyes. No, be, be, eyes calm for me. Oh, okay. You have scary eyes? Okay. <laughs> I blink like I'm sending Morse code to my captors. Do it again, I don't like the way my face felt. <laughs> Bonjour, I'm... Who am I? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. Well, okay. Like we'll, see. we'll see what happens. We'll see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see what comes out of my mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, that's not what you wanted to say. I know. Oh. You want to try it again? No. Yeah. Right. I don't think they care. They might. I, I care. Okay. I care. Okay. I care. All right, let's go. Right. It's cold. Yeah, it is cold. I know. When is the heat getting stopped? <laughs> Boy, is it windy. It's very windy. It's windy. Why is it so windy? It's windy. <sighs> Eventually, we're going to have to do the roof. We're going to have to... <laughs> the roof. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. That was good. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go and eat something. I'm hungry. Do you want to eat something? Well, I'm gonna go have an egg. Okay. <laughs>